Hello everyone, my name is Matt Yoder. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm excited to be presenting virtually here at Tadwig 2022. And I want to start by saying that while I'm doing the presentation here, this is clearly a talk that comes from many co-authors' efforts, in particular the Species File Group and our many different collaborators. So today I'd like to talk about three things publishing in general, publishing biodiversity informatics products. I'd like to highlight and introduce a couple of new products that are coming out of the Species File Group. And in doing so, I'll look at the relationships of those two sort of concepts and also highlight some of the challenges that come up when we publish things onto the web. I'm gonna use the definition of publish that is as follows. Uh, publish is to transform a product and move it to a new location such, a, such that it is accessible in a new way. So there's a couple of concepts, transforming, moving it, it's somewhere new, it's accessible in a different way, maybe it was in a database, now it's in print, um, etc. And we'll see those themes come out. So for example, here is a orthopteran, a grasshopper, um, as it's represented in the data structure of Taxon Works, a big graph of data. And obviously this isn't too useful to people in its present structure. It looks kind of cool. But we transform that data and we present it on the web, perhaps as a Taxon page in something that looks a little bit more familiar to people. So this is one quick example. Now to do this, we typically have to go from our research or our collection collections, uh, digitization projects, for example, through a whole bunch of technical barriers that stand in between our publishing. So those technical barriers may include things like having to have a workbench, a database, or some other uh, content management system, or an Excel sheet. Um, from that database, you need to then transform that data out. How are you going to do that? Your logistics. Once you have the data out, you need some scripts or some other ways to wrap that data to make a new product. And the product could be an HTML page, it could be an actual layout for a book or a hard copy. You then have to deliver that over the web in some technical way or deliver it electronically in some technical way. Perhaps putting it on a server that you have to maintain. So there's some technical costs there. And throughout that process, you have to maintain this effort as it, if you want it to persist and it's not just a one-time effort. So typically we break those technical barriers by using things like, for example, the integrated publishing toolkit that comes from GBIF and their efforts. And in that case, we start to not have to manage things like logistics and publishing tools and products and delivery. That's all done by somebody else. We still have some things that we have to overcome technically, running a server, for example, in some cases, and maintaining that server. And also perhaps maintaining the software that's doing the digitization in this case. Recently, not so recently, there's been sort of a accumulation of different technologies that have allowed us to publish a little bit more simply. And they sort of fall into three different categories. There's been new increasingly sophisticated workbenches that handle a lot of different data and can manage that for you. And those workbenches are uh, aware of the logistics or have the logistics that can serve out the data into a sort of generalized format, for example, as in JSON. We also have new software products, we'll be exemp uh, exemplifying some of those here today, that can take those data and then transform those into new products. And finally, we have new technologies that can remove some technical barriers that deliver the product to the servers that then make that data accessible to everyone in the long term. And so really we can remove a lot of the technical barriers or bridge those technical barriers and let us worry about a couple fewer things. And we'll show some examples of that here. We've been doing a lot with Taxon Works as sort of a workbench, and now we're starting to try to produce comp what we're calling companion products. These are things that um, are essentially publications coming out of Taxon Works. And these products that we'd like to illustrate today really can be published in four very simple steps here. Essentially, you find some uh, authentication token, you clone a repository to a new location, you edit a configuration file, and you turn your GitHub public pages setting on and you are published. And this is really the self part of the self-publishing on the web here. The things that you as a researcher can do when you have all these other tools lined up. So three examples here. The first is something we're calling taxon pages, and it is sort of what it's called. Um, well, 
taxon page anatomy, basically there's a set of uh, panels that all have a very sort of purpose-built um, set of goals behind each panel. There's some very basic navigation, and you can add your own pages in Markdown to sort of extend out your website. There's also some very basic, simple configuration that allows you to put things like how to cite your site on the bottom. Panel-wise, we're really trying to figure out um, what should we put in a panel and how should we sort of not let features drift and be discussed and debated forever. And so we sort of are working from or testing this concept of having one question per panel. As an X, I need Y to answer question Q to audience A. So for the map panel, for example, we might say, as a taxonomist, I need a map to answer the question, where generally does this taxon live to the audience of anyone four or older? We don't try to answer any other um, question with the basic map. We also try to sort of simplify things down so that there's one endpoint serving the data to that panel. That means that you can also get the raw data behind any of these simple uh, panels to do your more advanced types of research. And that improves data accessibility. It simplifies the semantics of those sort of complicated graphs that are behind the scene. It allows us to build purpose-built interfaces. Like we said, this is a panel to do that. And ultimately, we hope that Taxon Pages can be used for um, to integrate with not workbenches not only like Taxon Works, but any um, content management system that serves a JSON result. So we can quickly link up a new panel from a new source of data. It might be uh, Wikidata, it might be GBIF, it might be your own content management system. To do this, we have increasingly complex data, as we meant, noted, these big, huge graphs. There's a lot of effort that has to go into sort of summarizing these data. So in our image panel, for example, we have images that are linked to taxon concepts, specimens that fall into those concepts, observations of those specimens that are linked to images, etc. And we really have to crawl through all of the sort of the deep synonymy. And the Taxon Pages project, with the example from TaxonWorks, does a really nice job of S providing simple summaries for very complicated data. Our second product is Distinguish. It's a multi-entry key. It's deployed in exactly the same way we do taxon pages. Um, you can take any taxon works matrix and turn it into a multi-entry key, and it's essentially a one-page app. I don't have a time to talk about a lot of the features, but essentially you can code OTUs or specimens. There's many different trait types that you can code as uh, characters or as your columns. You can use M images everywhere. There's multilingual options available. You can provide co customized taggable sets that can help the user sort of further refine their look into the data. And you can further refine the uh, contents or the endpoints to focus on a particular rank, for example, genus or species. The third product we have is a something we're working on. It's called a paper. We're calling it a paper catalog. And this is what you'll be familiar with as a very simple nomenclatural catalog that covers things like uh, the nomenclature, but also things like repositories, types, distributions, and references. And then we produce three different formats there. There's an HTML format, a simple one-page HTML document that can be quite, quite long that you can serve, for example, on your own servers on a GitHub page very easily by putting up online. You can turn it in, into an EPUB with the ASCII doctor software, and you also have a markdown version. It all starts as a markdown rendering of that complex network of data that you can then customize and add and edit if you want to go to something else like a Word document or a different kind of publication. So in, com in sort of a summary of all of those features, all of these things are literally deployable in minutes now. We've worked with students, we've done it in workshops where we've shown examples of deploying these websites. Most of them, uh, one of them can be done offline. We recognize that we want to make all of them offline. You can run these on your desktop. They don't have to be on a server. So you just click and open the, the um, app on your, or your single HTML page and it will serve it on your desktop, which is very nice for exploring and sharing data and sharing views onto your data with your colleagues and colleagues and, and coworkers. Um, we, they all now at present require Taxon Works, but we are developing Taxon pages to be workbench agnostic. And they all serve on tax GitHub pages if you want to use that uh, format. So to conclude, um, in doing this kind of work, there's been a couple of key challenges that have come up. As I noted, as the semantics and our workbenches get more refined and, and better at sort of describing our data, summarizing those for human consumable products like a, a simplified taxon page become increasingly difficult. There's a lot of forking of 
what to show if this is here and this isn't there, for example. And that's a real challenge. In building the paper catalog, we notice that people really want a, a spreadsheet of the distribution data that comes out of that, that's summarized from all of the different data sources. So that could come from collections, that could come from checklists, that could come from published data, etc. And we struggle to find an integrated sort of consumer consumable standard that can represent all of that data in one place so that the user could kind of just take that catalog data and throw it into a single spreadsheet. So I think there needs to be some work on the standard side of things there. And um, finally, we'd love and we plan to work hard at making all these products available completely offline so that you do not need those requests back to the API. And that's another big challenge. And then with that one-to-one -one uh, one -one representation offline, there's issues of latency. How often do you update your offline version? And then archiving. These are sort of familiar concepts to our group. But overall, we feel like it's a, these couple of new products sort of address a nice little niche in this challenge of self-publishing on the web. Thanks for your attention. There's lots of links there. Of course, this is all open source projects that are all available at right now on GitHub. And there's lots of opportunities for us, for you to join us and ask questions. We have weekly events. Uh, we have an increasingly large YouTube gallery of videos, a chat. You can follow announcements about Taxonworks on Twitter, etc. Thanks again, and hopefully I have some time for questions.